Hi guys, I'm Sparkmaster Neon, and today I'm joined with my friend Drew, and we're going to talk to you about knowing your worth. So to me, knowing your worth is about taking loving yourself to another level. It's about loving yourself so much internally that when someone tries to bring you down, it doesn't work. So Drew, what does knowing your worth mean to you? It means being proud of yourself and sticking by your morals no matter what people say, knowing who you are and what you stand for. I believe that knowing yourself and knowing your worth is one of the most important things in life. I agree. Okay. Now, I know my worth. I'm an amazing person that who rocks the color orange and shines bright every day. And no matter how many times I fall, I always rise again. Now, Drew, how would you describe your worth? I believe I'm a good looking dude. I wouldn't say I'm like a 10 or anything, but I think I'm a decent 8. I also believe that I do great by helping others and those who are in need. Even if they don't want my help, I'm going to try at least. Um, today, I actually was in a similar situation where somebody didn't know that they needed help or and didn't know what to do. And me and Andrew here actually uh, helped them out, or spark master as you like to be called. Yeah, we try. <laughs> I try to help. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. While knowing your worth is good, it's also important not to look down on others. Now, I want to give a personal example. In, in the game I play on and off, Final Fantasy XIV, I, um, I led this guild. It was called Phoenix Tale, as per my motto. Um, I actually kind of perfected the idea of my motto with this guild. But anyway, some drama occurred. Someone took like the guild funds, the money, and it was a close friend of mine. And honestly, I was torn between trying to punish them like everyone was yelling at me to do. And, you know, they're my friend. I wanted to defend them. I wanted to be like, it's just a joke gone wrong. And honestly, I should have. I should have said it's a joke gone wrong. You know, and I know they're in leadership. So maybe the smart thing was to take it away for a week. Maybe something small. Be like, hey, it's not cool. And then restore it. We're good. And if people didn't like it, people didn't like it. But in the end, I was too focused on trying to keep everyone happy and my ego of, oh, we're, we're a strong guild. No matter what happens, we'll make it through it. And thinking highly of myself as the controlling entity of the guild, I, I kind of let the power blind me. And to this day, I've told myself, never again. Never, if, if some choice needs to be made, it needs to be made. And honestly, I trust myself to make the choice that I view as best. And honestly... When I had lost myself to this power-hungry whatever, Drew snapped me out of it. So thanks for that, Drew. You're welcome. I'm sorry about halfway burning down Phoenix Tail in the process. That's fine. It can rise from the ashes maybe one day. One day Hopefully. again. Hopefully. And I won't let the power go to my head because never again. Don't worry. I'll be the to snap you out of it again if it does. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Always have someone who knows your worth at your back. So that way when you feel down, they can help you get back up. Because it always makes it that much easier. So Drew, was there ever a time your ego got the best of you? Yes, I actually had a friend who uh, I known since childhood. And growing up, around the age of 12, I met other friends who I believed were cooler at the time. You know how kids are. And believed that I'd rather hang out with them than my friend, who they didn't like because they believed him uncool. And I left him behind, and I feel really bad about it. Um, we did make up a couple years back, but still, it itches me that I was so up in my own ego that I forgot about the people who had been there for me my entire life. Okay. Yeah. You know, like, it's, it's important to, you know, make sure you, le you include everyone and not let your ego push others away. Yeah, I think that's a lesson we all could work on, learn from. But yeah, that's, that's very powerful. Thank you for that story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, it's not always your ego that gets in the way. Sometimes someone else's ego gets in the way. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get through to them. Like, for once, I'm going to go back to the Final Fantasy XIV thing. A friend of mine was getting married in the game. And it was on midnight Valentine's Day. And what, what a romantic thing. But, uh... Honestly, I really wanted to go, and I was for some odd reason I was thinking midnight Valentine's Day was the night after Valentine's Day and not the night before. And on the morning of Valentine's Day at 7 a.m., I had a shift, so I went to bed early, and left my PlayStation on in the middle of a Batman video game because I love DC Universe, and honestly, I love it. But 
it looked like I ignored their wedding to play the video game. And that's not what happened. And no matter how many times I tried to make it right, no matter how many times I apologized, I never seemed to be able to get through to them. They just wouldn't talk to me and just negative stuff. Honestly, I still, to, to an extent, feel bad about it. But eventually, because all it was was negative, all it was was them yelling at me and treating me like le a lesser of a person. And I know I'm not a lesser of a person. I decided I had to cut them out and go. we had to go our separate ways for the good of both. They didn't need to be mad at me all the time and I didn't need to take their negative energy. And honestly, I think that's another part of knowing your worth is knowing when to take a step back because people are putting you down and bringing you down. So Drew... Was there ever a time you had to cut a friend off because they made you feel like less or they made you feel like they thought they were more worth than you? Yes, there was. Uh, my friend, a good close friend of mine, introduced me to another one of my friends at the time who decided that uh, he had issues, actually, and um, he was homeless. So I decided that I would let him into my home for a while and try to give him a fresh start. And I gave him food, you know, tried to help him get a new job. The issue was, is he didn't want to find a mediocre job. He wanted a job of his choosing. And at the time, he really didn't have the right to be picky, you know. So, eventually, uh, all he did was get into mischief and trouble with the uh, law. And at times, it was just hard to keep him in line. And eventually, one day, he was dragged away to prison, and a couple of months later, came knocking. And that's when I realized, after all that time without him, that he was dragging me down in the process. And that I wasn't going to let him back in my home, since he had become ungrateful and believed that he was better than me, in a way, to the point where I was doing all the work, and all he did was is sitting at home playing video games and watching TV. Yeah, it's, it's always difficult to tell someone, hey, I feel like you're taking advantage of me. Maybe we need some space and kind of going forward. Whether that's someone's yelling at you for something they think you did negative or when somebody's just not treating you with respect. And let me point out that you don't have to cut them off permanently. Sometimes yes. you just need to have space to decide whether or not you still want to be friends. It's always important to realize that this per what this person means to you or to the people around you? Are they destroying your other friendships with other people or making you feel bad about yourself? Maybe that's not the case. And if it's not, you can introduce them back into your life, but you don't want them to destroy your life. So if it's that case, then it's always important to let that person go, even if they do mean something to you, to better yourself in a way. And hopefully that they learn from their mistakes and hopefully they do eventually know their worth and get better yeah and sometimes it is that step away that it's the wake-up call it's like wait i can't rely on them anymore maybe it's me not them and they start to try and fix what was off what they were the way they were treating people they start to rethink things and turn their life around for the better i mean that happened with me and Sparkmaster here at one point we did get into an argument and and we did both go our separate ways I talked about <laughs> yeah we, we did go yeah. our separate ways for a while but we both learned our lesson and have improved on who we are as a person. We both now know our worth, but if you continue doing the bad things that you have been up to that point, and some one of you has changed and the other hasn't, then it is time to let that person go to better yourself. And hope that they better themselves. Of yeah. course. And that's actually how you snapped me out of it, with what you were saying, yeah. So another thing is knowing your worth means that you love yourself to the point where others can't bring you down, as I said earlier. Now, I'd like to give a story or an example of how knowing my worth made it so that others couldn't get me down. Now, when I was a kid, I was a crybaby. I was overweight and people would call me, like the bullies would call me cow or these overweight terms, cow, dinosaur, and whatnot. But I would always run home to my mom crying and she'd be like, what do you care? You're a dinosaur. Dinosaurs are cool, aren't they? I was like, yeah, but they called me a dinosaur, and I'd cry. And one day, I eventually, I got fed up with it. And they called me a dinosaur. It's like, yeah, I'm a dinosaur, and dinosaurs are awesome. Dinosaurs will rip you up. Do you really want me to be a dinosaur? Because if you make me angry, that's not good for you. 
And suddenly they quit, they quit making fun of me, you know? They realized they couldn't get me down, and so why even try anymore? And then it was better for everyone, you know? No, there was less negativity, and they actually stopped picking on a lot of people. So, Drew, was there ever a time where you had to stand up for yourself? Yes, there was. Um, at the age, I believe, of 13, I was a bit obese. I ate a lot. I know it's hard to believe, but I weighed over 300 pounds. And people made fun of me for that. They teased me about my weight and made fun of the things I did and what I ate. And I guess it helped me improve myself because I didn't want to be called that. But at that time, it's not something that people should do to other people. So I got into fights and it became a person I didn't want to be. Um, but it did make them stop in a way. Kids don't get into fights. It's never good. Um, gets you in trouble, juvie, all those other things. But um, after a while, I did slim down, I got better, and I became the person that I really wanted to be that made me feel better about myself and allowed me to know my worth in a way that like, I hadn't changed before. But at the other times, like, it was wrong with them. And when I got into fights, it did make them stop. I stood up for myself in a way. I wouldn't recommend getting into fights, but standing up for yourself is a key part of knowing your worth. You always want to know where you stand. Yeah, it's always best if you can talk it out, because violence is never the answer, and it gets it just complicates it. Like I said, juvie. Yeah, you want to reach a mutual understanding with the person, so that way maybe they'll stop. And if they can't, the uh, mutual understanding can't be reached, the best thing to do is to walk away. Or even worse than juvie, a keen scolding your mom or dad oh no <laughs> terrifying worse than terrifying yeah sometimes you're just like officer take me away i don't want my parents to be involved in this yeah exactly um another i mean but sometimes when people try to get you down sometimes it works or maybe even life like for example when i was in high school i was nauseous all the time and i got i had a doctor's note that said i had to be on homebound school which meant the teacher came to my house provided by the county and whatnot and honestly being sick for that long it was three years three four years i honestly had given up that i was ever going to feel better because doctors didn't know what was wrong with me and it wasn't until right after graduation at high school um in 2014 that they found my gallbladder wasn't working and that was the cause of all of it. And it was like, well, oh, there's my answer. And honestly, over time, I felt worse and worse about, like, I was never going to get better before I had the diagnosis and whatnot. And eventually, I just learned to live with it. And that's what I'm getting at is eventually, you just don't care anymore. You can overcome feeling worthless and find your worth again. I was lucky. Um, it was a medical issue that got sorted out. And it's all good now. But sometimes, it's, you just have to relax Go with the flow and wait for that time when you know that you don't deserve this and you can fight for a way out. And that's what it comes to when you're, when you're feeling worthless. It, it's about trying to find a way of thinking positively about your situation as opposed to negatively. Find the positive and find the light in the darkness. And honestly, that's living a phoenix tale as well. You've fallen and it's about rising back up and, sh and striving for the best that you can get. So, Drew, have you ever felt worthless, and if how, how did you find your way out of the darkness? I believe, once again, it was back when I was 13 and really overweight. But uh, my way of finding my way out of the darkness was by working out, staying fit, making sure I was okay with what I looked like, and if I wasn't, making sure I did the changes to do so. Um, I also had my friends around me. It's always important to have good friends who also know your worth. They help me stand up for myself. They help me get out of my dark place. It's always important to have people who know their worth and know yours. Um, you also need to make sure that your family knows your worth as well. It's always important that family is there for you because some families don't know your worth. There sadly are families out there who do treat their families with less respect than they do themselves. And family is very important to have. It can make or break you growing up as a child. And luckily I had caring parents who did know my worth. Yeah, I am too. I was lucky I had people who cared about me. And sometimes we don't, but knowing your worth and loving yourself is about having it come from within. So that way you can strive for your best, even if you don't have the 
a positive situation. But if you do, it is very helpful. And if you don't have it at home, finding it in friends and other sources is always a good thing. Finding people that have your back that will always help you get up when you fall is very important. And it helps you to know you're worth more because you have all these good people around you, so you must be a good person too, right? But yeah, and next I want to talk about some words of encouragement I use for myself when I'm feeling down. Like when I'm trying to help someone and they don't want to, the help and I'm like, or I'm trying to reach out to someone and they're just ignoring me. All I can do is try and I look at myself and I go, hey, at least you're trying. That means you care. That means you're a good person because you're trying. You know, and honestly, that helps me a lot in trying to help people. Another thing is when I'm feeling down and wearing my orange, I look down and I go, look at you, you're rocking orange. What do you have to worry about? You know, you don't have to have a fear in the world. You're being yourself, you're shining bright. And honestly, that helps me come out of the darkness as well. It helps me fight my depression and whatnot. Another thing is, I like to say every once in a while that, I like I'll say to myself, yep, or all right. But what I'm really saying to myself is that I'm proud of myself. I am honestly, if I can say that I'm proud of myself, then I know I care. I know I care about myself and I know I'm not worried about what other people think because I'm proud of myself. So if I'm proud of myself, what does it matter if others are? What does it matter if someone thinks negative thoughts about me because I wear orange or something superficial? Now, if it's something awful, like I committed a crime or something, obviously it's like, okay, I'm not proud of myself for that. But if I'm proud of myself, other people should be proud of me. And honestly, I don't care if they are or aren't, but it's a good thing to be proud of yourself. And then lastly, when I'm trying to do good or I feel like I'm just an awful person for whatever reason, a lot of times it doesn't have a reason, depression is awful, but I look at myself and I say, look, you are a truly good person. If others can't see that, that's on them. That's not on you. All you can do is try your best to follow your standards and expectations and be the example you want to be in your life. Shine bright and live a phoenix tale, which is also the last thing, the thing I say all the time to myself, just make sure I'm shining bright and living a phoenix tale because that's how I live my life. So yeah, Drew, what kinds of things do you say to encourage yourself? Well, I look at myself in the mirror and say, aren't you the handsome young devil? But that's just my opinion <laughs> and a lot of other people's opinion. I also look <laughs> around and see that the friends that I've made are true friends and loyal friends, so I know I've done good to earn them. Um, I have a great family that still loves and cares for me. And, uh, yeah, I do, I do look at myself in the mirror a lot and think of how great a person I am and how hot I am. Andrew, I'm I frozen. thought you said you're hot. What do you I'm, mean I'm you're cold? <laughs> Can you get this off me? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I hear you, you know? And there's nothing wrong with looking at yourself in the mirror going, dang, I look fine. But that's also, that's loving yourself. If you can't look in the mirror and say, Damn, dang, you're fine. I mean, I can expect other people to say that when they see you. Like, wow, he's cool. He looks great. Like, yeah, I hear you on that. Nothing wrong with it. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think that covers knowing your worth pretty well. Me too. You know? Just always know that as long as you love yourself, no matter what others think, it matters what you think. What you think is what's most important. It's what's most important to you. It's what should be most important no matter what you're, you're involved in. As long as you care about yourself, you should be in the right. But it's also smart not to let that get the better of your perception and, and smear it in a way that doing something wrong looks right. Because doing something wrong is not right. It's wrong. But yeah, I think, I think that wraps up our discussion on knowing your worth. I'm Sparkmaster Neon. If you like the video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. I love to hit the thumbs up because it's a, it means you like it. Yeah. Um, hit the notification bell and you can personalize it so you get notifi notified periodically when we post. Or you can hit it so we notify you all the time when we post. Leave, a, leave what you think knowing your worth means to you in the comments below. I love to interact with you guys and I can't stress it enough that if you interact with me, it's, it just it helps us all. And honestly, I think it's a very good thing to comment and discuss these topics because they are very intellectual and different perspectives open up different ideas about them. And I'm Sparkmaster Neon, and as always, shine bright and live a phoenix tale.